Hello my geek fam! Today is a bit special, we will leave the classic painters for a while and see how we can do a movie poster in the style of Drew Struzan, the legendary illustrator for hundreds of iconic movie posters. This is a request from Romain, my good friend from Canada and longtime subscriber of this channel. Let's do it! Hi guys, I hope you like the new video schedule. On the 15th on each month, we have a style guide in seven steps, just like this one. And on the first of each month, we have our museum mysteries, where the curator will tell you about art oddities and true crime. So don't miss an episode, like, share and comment with your challenges, suggestions and questions. Also, don't hesitate to share your art on social media with the hashtag MGFCPaint, so I can see it. Just like the underworld art studio who made this body Christ in the style of Van Gogh, Miss Leopard who did a portrait of a very distinguished bearded man also in the style of Van Gogh, and our regular on this channel, Lani, who didn't hesitate to show us her grandson crying on the potty in Roy Lichtenstein style. All of you, your creativity, talent and humor always astonish me. Continue like that. But Let's go back to today's subject. Let's make a movie poster in the style of Drew Struzan. I can hear already the fine art aficionados saying a movie poster is not art. What is that? Give us back the master, yada yada yada. But Drew Struzan is a real master at his craft and it is estimated he did at least 150 movie posters in his career. You have most probably seen one of them. Star Wars, Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, The Goonies, The Shawshank Redemption, Blade Runner, Hellboy, The Thing, Police Academy, etc, etc. Yes, these posters that made you dream as a kid, and maybe still do as an adult if you are like me, are from the masterful hand of Drew Struzan. Born in 47 in Oregon from a very humble family, Struzan has always drawn and painted. His family was so poor that he say he had to draw on toilet paper sometimes. One of the school counselors told him he could either become a fine art painter, either an illustrator. In fine art, he could paint whatever he wanted, but as an illustrator, he could paint for money. And that was enough to decide for Struzan, who said, I need to eat, and went to the Art Center College of Design in Los Angeles in 1965. He got his Bachelor of Art degree with honors in five years and completed his graduate studies with an additional two years. He says that upon graduating, he sent his portfolio to several companies and the two that offered him a job were Disney to paint some backgrounds for the animation and Pacific Eye and Ear to paint some music album covers. He chose the albums and for the next five years he churned out covers for the likes of the Beach Boys, Earth, Wind and Fire, Liberace, Black Sabbath, Roy Orbison and Alice Cooper. The cover for Alice Cooper attracted a lot of attention. It was voted by the magazine Rolling Stone as one of the 100 best covers of all time and the rest is history. He did more and more posters for movies starting with the re-release of Star Wars in 1978. On top of all the ones I have cited earlier, we can also name Batteries Not Included, The Muppets Movie, Hook, Coming to America, E.T., etc., etc. The growing use of digital painting for movie posters forced him to look for more avenues for his art, especially the collector's market and comic books. After a few successful exhibitions and a worldwide reconnaissance, he announced his retirement in 2008, although he came out of it for films like The Force Awakens and How to Train Your Dragon. So, let's try and do a movie poster in his style. For this, we need a movie. We have a movie? Indiana Jones? What, the latest? Uh, Dial of Destiny? The Sword of what? Okay, sh show, show me the trailer.
Dr. Jones, Winston Churchill here. Yes, I've been told, Mr. Prime Minister. What can I do for you? Hitler is actively researching for the sword of King Arthur. You need to find the sword before the Nazis. Excalibur? I thought it was a fairy tale. Don't worry. We are sending someone to help you. Hello, Junior. So King Arthur's tomb was discovered in Glastonbury? Yes, and two swords were retrieved. They were offered to an Italian king by Richard I on his way to the Third Crusade. And this is how sword in the stone. This isn't even the one. Come on, it's not even 5th century English. This sword was brand new when King Richard brought it here. It's the other sword then. Ah, this one. It was bought a few months ago by a rich Chinese collector. Do you have his name? Hello, Dr. Jones. I thought you are looking for my sword. Let's try to make a movie poster for this blockbuster. We will paint this on an illustration board. Drew Struzan was always priming it with a layer of gesso. The idea is that if you need to make corrections, you can always go back to the gesso by adding a new layer, whereas you can't go back to the paper and your corrections will be obvious. Illustration board is a layer of paper glued to a layer of cardboard and to avoid warping you need to wet the back before adding the gesso. Both sides will dry at the same time and you won't have one expanding more than the other. Struzan was also adding a bit of tint to his gesso, usually a dash of black, to have a gray surface to work on. Once you have done that, add a bit of splatters of different colors to create an uneven background and a bit of a vintage feel. I did that with an old toothbrush. I've watched a very interesting video the other day that identifies three elements in all of Struzan's composition. First, we have a rectangle that would frame the poster. Then there is a circle, usually with a smaller silhouette of one of the action scenes in the movie. And then we have a huge triangle that encompasses all the faces of the main characters. For our example, we can imagine a scene where Indiana Jones pulled the sword from the stone with a lot of lights and less lens flares. The triangle will contain the character, maybe here Indiana Jones as the main, there is Father, Lao Che here with a menacing green, the Italian archaeologist at the bottom, and in smaller size, the seemingly Nazi lady and the Chinese Kung Fu bad guy. The frame could use some Chinese pattern to signal that this adventure is set in China, and we will fill up the corners with maybe a car, some planes, and a silhouette of fights. Take good pictures of your actors and trace all this as precisely as possible. You need to have a very good idea of where everything will go from the start. to give some contrast. With a black paint or China ink like I did, give a rough outline of your drawing and the shadow zone in grayscale. This will make the airbrush color darker and help you give a sense of depth 
to your characters. I must confess it was the first time I used an airbrush. It takes a bit of getting used to, and to be frank, I know I couldn't reach the skill level of Drew Struzan, but I took it slowly, building my colors layer after layer from the lighter to the darker one. Yellow, then orange, red, and then brown for the warm colors, and light blue, then dark blue, then gray, and finally almost black for the cold colors. The idea is not to color perfectly between the lines, but to give an ambiance and a harmony to the composition. You can help yourself with a piece of cardboard and use it as a stencil to hide the parts where you don't want color. Now come the times for the colored pencils. The airbrush hides the fine detail from your grayscale underpainting, so you need to bring this back from the fog. Add light to your dark areas and dark to your lights. Think in areas rather than in lines. Think of all the shadows and light reflections you must give an epic and dramatic allure to all these faces. The idea is to achieve a chiaroscuro, like the old Venetian masters, we have a light from one side, a deep zone of shadow, then some fill light on the other side. Make your blacks blacker and your whites whiter. All these steps made us lose some of the original contrast we were striving for. So let's take a pure white paint and trace the points where the light hits our subjects directly. The same way, with pure black, we will deepen our shadows or simply the areas where the poster should be black. The titles are usually done by computer, but in this case, I also took the time to go over them to make them visible. is the time to bring everything together. See where the light is coming from and adjust some of the portraits. Also see the differences in skin color and adjust where some faces appear darker or lighter than they should compared to the others. Add lens flares and rays of light. Make your poster shine. And we are done. This definitely made me go out of my comfort zone and I hope it will be the same for you. There is nothing like feeling you are learning new techniques. Don't hesitate to show me your movie posters on social media with the hashtag MGFCPaint and like, share, comment on this video with challenges you would like to see next time. Cheers and keep creating! We say you are drinking and you hear the three, two, one. You are surprised when you see me.
Because you are not expecting your dad. Yeah? Okay, sorry. We do it again. You can see me. 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 the third cruising. This is our sword in the stone. And this is our sword in the stone. And this is our sword in the stone. Okay, ah, uh, this... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Okay, what, what new one? Ah, this one. It was bought by. Was it bought a few months ago? Okay. Yeah, a few months ago. Uh, okay, can I just. Yeah, don't worry. I, I keep ah, it. Ah, this one. It was bought. Wait, 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 stop again because I was talking. Hot. And action. Hello, Dr. Jones. I heard you are looking for my sword. Do you think you can handle it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and action. Hello, Dr. Jones. I heard you are looking for my sword. 